What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 8 of Park to Prem here with Lincoln City. Today we have a huge game against Wigan Athletic, a team who really shouldn't be down in a fourth place in League 2. Of course a team who not that many years ago were in FA Cup finals and indeed European football as you kind of get a taste for based off this graph. It's been an interesting few years for Wigan, but unfortunately last year they succumbed to relegation from League One, and under Paul Cook they are looking to bounce back, and uh, well, so far they're not doing too much of that. Now what else you might have noticed here is, we're top of the league. Yes, I, 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 this is one of those awkward moments as a YouTuber where someone, you've seen me draw the first game of the season and I come back and I go, we've won six in a row in the league. And so there is going to be one or two people who roll their eyes at that. Today, we're going to prove our worth against Wigan. Uh, in truth, League 2 is obviously a really competitive league. And after two games of the season were played, no one had won two. No one had six points after two games. You can see here, so many teams drawing against one another. The league itself is so incredibly close. Although, because we have gone on this little winning run, we are starting to pull away. And I attribute that to one change that I made after the Exeter game. And it's not a drastic change. It's not a massive change. But I switched from attacking mentality to positive. And what that has seen us do is really seize hold of the ball in a way that we hadn't really been doing before at any point during my time at the club. You can see here we have an average possession of 56%. I'm pretty sure against Exeter we had less of the ball. Um, interesting to note, I suppose, today's game against Wigan is against the other team who are having a lot of the ball. So I expect to see lots of battling for possession, I suppose, over the course of this game. But yeah, it's always amazing with Football Manager Tactics how just a few little tweaks here and there, you know, things drastically change off the back of them. It, it's like a balancing act, and sometimes you just change one little setting and it all clicks, and that's kind of what it feels like today. Anyway, before we talk about results, I do want to talk about a few little things that happened off the pitch um, over the summer that I forgot to mention previously. The first of which is we are now affiliated with Nottingham Forest, who are playing up in the Premier League. They were actually promoted, I believe, last season. But this is a useful little uh, deal. Unfortunately, many of their better young players didn't want to join us on loan in League 2 just yet. But I think in terms of a longer-term deal that could allow us to get in some really good players in on loan, this is like the ideal kind of loan, really. Forest are a good team. They're a big team. They are trying to establish themselves as a Premier League club. Um, you can see here they've kind of ping-ponged up and down through the leagues. Last season, they finished 16th. Right now, they're up in 10th. So keep it going, Notts Forest. And Chris Hewton's their manager. Not the manager I would envisage to get Notts... Uh, not, I was about to say Notts Forest. Nottingham Forest. Uh, don't come for me, Notts County fans. Or Nottingham Forest. Please, I'm innocent. I'm sorry, right, move on, move on, I'm going to get attacked by our affiliates if I'm not careful. And the other big bit of change actually was in the staff. I did a bit of an overhaul of the staff. I hadn't touched it too much when I joined the club. I noticed that a lot of the staff members had contracts expiring at the end of the year. So what I ended up doing was letting them expire and then kind of bringing in some of my own staff. And there's a few fairly big names here, actually, which I, I feel like is always delightful. We all, we all want, you know, the big names. So if we just sort by international caps, let's take a peek at them, shall we? So obviously the, the obvious one is Davids, but we've got Peter Crouch. Vincente has joined us as our chief scout. He's going to provide some much needed knowledge of Spain. I say that like it's going to be useful. With Brexit, we're not going to be signing any Spanish players for a little while, I imagine. Jonathan Woodgate has joined us as a coach. Very, very good coach, of course. Been a manager at a fair few teams. After a couple of years out of the game, he decided, uh, you know what, maybe being a coach isn't that bad. So well, welcome, Jonathan. He must be a bit annoyed that Peter Crouch is my assistant and not him, really. And the last player that I signed... I say player. The last year that we was a player. Uh, the last staff member I've signed is Ryan Shawcross. And you might think, Jack, why have you signed Ryan Shawcross? Look, it's, I once said that Ryan Shawcross was going to play for England in a podcast that I used to do. He played once for England. It happened. I've had a soft spot for him ever since. So when I saw that he could become my director of football, uh, a staff role, which, if I'm honest, I don't really use all that much... I couldn't say no. Well, welcome, Ryan. Welcome. Anyway, shall we talk about the games since you were last here? We have played a fair few ahead of this game against Wigan. Um, you can see a whole host in the league as well as a few in the cup. 
Anyway, we started off after the draw against Exeter with a game against Shrewsbury. Uh, Shrewsbury are a team who are predicted to do very, very well this year. They have a lot of players in the media, Dream 11. We beat them 2-0. Was it a game where we outplayed them? Not, not really. It was two set pieces. Cons and then Quanta getting the goals for us. The two centre-backs, they did also have a man sent off in this game. And as you're going to see... That was kind of a, a constant pattern through this run of results. Anyway, the very next game we had was against somewhat local rivals, Scunthorpe. We beat them 2-0, Glatzel with a goal from the penalty spot, and then Ellis Sims came in and bagged a goal. And I'll tell you now, Sims is looking really, really good to start the year. I think, well, when I brought him in, I was hoping he'd be that replacement for Farl, kind of the direct upgrade. I think he's doing that and a little bit more. He's got five goals so far this season, three of which have come in the league. Cautiously optimistic for the future of this boy. I think he, he he could be a real game changer. Anyway, the next few games we won in the league were against Tranmere and Accrington. A 2-1 win followed by a 2-0 win. Again, Josh Thomas getting two in this game. The Welshman, of course, on loan from Swansea. Continuing on with his goal-scoring antics from last season, which is always lovely to see. We're certainly not short of goals, as you can see from the results in this run of games. And also, Quanza, he scored again, everyone. He's got a big forehead. Uh, as you can see, they had a man set off in this game after 18 minutes. That definitely made things easier for us. Anyway, the next game we had was against Rotherham. This was in the EFL Trophy second round. Rotherham were championship opposition, so we welcomed them to our ground with open arms. And this was a proper game of football, everyone. This was a proper game. This was one of those games of football you just love to watch, even if you end up losing it on penalties. Yes, Ellis Sims in this game scored the opening goal. He was rewarded for his persistence. They scored from the penalty spot just before half-time. In the second half, Gary Garbutt scored for us, of course. He is the centre-back who we signed from Manchester United on a free transfer. Someone who I do think has a bright future at the club, so it was great to see him get on the score sheet here. Unfortunately, from that, they scored a quick double. The first was via Guerrero, who had already scored from the spot, and then the next was from Michael Ehekwi. I'm sorry, Michael. I'm sorry. Anyway, 3-2 up. You might think that we were going to lose our grip onto the game after the two quick goals for them, but no. Aidan Fitzpatrick, one minute later... Back, back post on his right foot, tucks it away, makes it 3-3. And then Ben Cottrell misses the opening penalty of the shootout and everyone else scores. So we went out. Sad, sad times indeed. The good news is it's not set us back too far. We were able to be Ebb's Fleet 2-0 in the league, which was a good result. In the EFL Trophy, we opened up the competition with a 2-0 win against Bolton Wanderers before a 4-1 win against bottom of the table Stevenage. In this game, Ellis Sims got a hat-trick, as well as Paul Glatzel getting his second goal of the season, this time from open play. And while in our most recent game, we took on South End, we win it 4-0, and um, we opened up the goal scoring with Gary Garbutt scoring again. I'll tell you what, we've been lethal from our set pieces. Our aerial ability has been really good, as you perhaps noticed from this run of games. Ben Cottrell then grabbed a goal for us. He's been in some fine form to start the year. Really nice finish in this game. Carter then scored for us in the 78th minute, and then in the 91st minute, on off the bench, the man who didn't score a goal all of last season... He popped up with a big... I say it was a big one. It was 3-0 at the time. Look, it counts. It was a big goal. Mark Cooper, welcome to Lincoln City. It's taken him a while to get off the mark. But finally, he scored a goal here against Southend. And with that, well, he's now got one goal in 14. So the pressure is on for him to continue to improve. But finally, his goal-scoring form of the Northern Ireland under-21 setup is bleeding through into his league form. And as a result of, well, his good form and an injury, he's actually on the bench today. So, Cooper, you might get a chance here against Wigan, my friend. But yes, I talked about the change in tactical kind of style in terms of going to positive. Another thing that is really worth noting is how much we have rotated the team around. I have not settled on the same start in 11 for too long. One of the big kind of gifts, I think, of... The transfer business we did this summer was, we have so much talent in the attacking third. I can really pick a team based off form. Uh, sadly for us, Ben Cottrell, um, you know, he, he's been good. He, he missed the all-important penalty, but in terms of league form, he's been great. He's got six assists, one goal in seven appearances in the league, and he's played a few different positions for us. He's played out on the right and indeed down the middle where he is more natural. Um, that came off the back of Paul Green having a little bit of an injury at, at advanced playmaker. But across the board, you can see here the average ratings are very good. Compared to last season, where I think we ended up with maybe 
three, three or four players above a 7.0 rating. To see so many players in the green is absolutely superb. And I'd be lying if I was to say it doesn't warm my heart a little bit that Quanza, the record transfer man, is hit the ground running this year. A 7.41 average rating after seven games in the league. Oh, always rated him, never doubted him. Very, very happy by the way in which he has started his time at the club. Anyway, due to the injury to Fitzpatrick, we are going to have to change things up. Taylor Richards comes into the team. He will be playing as an inverted winger out on the left-hand side. It's a little bit suboptimal given the fact he's left-footed, but he's done an okay job there when we've called upon him so far this year. And the rest of the team kind of picks itself. I suppose the only one area where you could say maybe there's a, a debate to be had is, do you start Josh Thomas or do you start Ellis Sims? I mean, Thomas is definitely the more complete player, but Sims is a little bit better in the air, a little bit more physical. And well, when you compare their goal scoring form, they're not worlds away from one another. Josh has always started, he very rarely has come on off the bench, whereas Sims did get a hat trick fairly recently, which has undeniably inflated his goal scoring, but that also kind of makes him the man in form. I think for today's game, we're going to stick with Josh Thomas, but it's lovely to know that in our back pocket, we've got a player like Sims, we can just bring off the bench as a little bit of a game changer in a game like this one. Anyway, as I've already mentioned, we can have a lot of the ball. I'm hoping that we have the quality here to dominate possession. I really do buy into the idea that we have the best kind of team in the league in terms of ball playing ability. We have some super technical centre mids, some super technical attacking mids. We've got great goal scorers defensively at wing back as well. I think it's hard to look past um, the likes of Lopez and also, of course, Hughes at right back when it comes to overall ability. And uh, well, with all that said and done, let's get into this game, shall we? Kick off time. Big game. Taking on Wigan, perhaps the biggest team in this division, if you were just going to look at their kind of reputation and name value. You can see here, looking at the league table, a win here would be a great chance to pull away. Eagle-eyed viewers may have also noticed, Boston are in fifth, everyone. Tomorrow's opposition, Boston are in the playoff hunt. Maybe even the automatic promotion hunt. We're going to hope to put a big dent in their ambitions when we take them on tomorrow, but we can't worry about that right now. As Thomas has played through, keeps it alive well. Can he put it into the mixer? He can't, but Hughes will be there. The former United wingback whips it in, but well, his cross was a little bit disappointing. Of course, Hughes and Lopez coming in with a big fanfare from Arsenal and United. Lopez at left-back has been the better-looking player so far. But uh, make no mistake, neither neither's looked terrible. You know, n neither of them have made a mistake where I've rolled my eyes and gone, maybe it was a mistake to sign them. Which is more than what can be said for how we ended last season with the right back situation. Anyway, Cottrell bringing it forward, looking for assist number seven of the year, gives it to Richards, tight angle, pulls it back to Green, who hits it into the bottom corner. The flying Scotsman, the Boston United playmaker, or should I say former. Boston United, he's ours now, he's our boy now. He turns up, the youngest player in our starting eleven, And fair play to Richards here, talked about it. He's playing this inverted winger role on the left side whilst being left-footed. Not ideal for him, but with Fitzpatrick out injured, he's the man I'm putting faith in. And he pops up within the first half an hour with an assist like that one. That, that is what you want to see. And as I said, right at the top, yes, we drew against Exeter. Since then, since we switched to positive... For our mentality, we've looked absolutely superb. Really hoping we're going to show you what we're all about today. Green, the goal scorer, picks up the ball, plays it forward to Thomas. Huge ball over. Can Thomas finish this? He should finish this. He does finish this. He chips it over the keeper. It's 5-0 before... 5-0? No. 2-0 before 5 minutes before half time. I wish it was 5 min nil, 2 minutes before half time. It's not. 2s and 5s. Confusing numbers. They're like mirrored of each other. Look. It's difficult, isn't it? It's difficult. Look, treat me gently, chat. <laughs> treat, treat me gently, chat. Treat me gently, comment section. Thomas makes it 2-0. And I'll tell you what, we've been clinical. We've taken the chances that have come our way, and Wigan have done diddly squat. Very pleased. Look, at, look how happy they all are. We've got a happy dressing room. M Memento is on our side. Just more, more of the same in the second. Finney, over the free kick. Can he, can he put in the finish? He can put in the finish. What a ball. What an effort. What a goal. Wasn't exactly into the top corner. Keeper maybe could have done better. We're not going to complain. It's 3-0, it's everyone. I'm really glad that this is 3-0 to us, because if it had been the other way, I know it. I, people would have been like, Jack, you can't win all your games, then lose in the live comms. It's not happening today, everyone. We're insane. 
not like this, not like balls, 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 but right, changes, <laughs> changes. Ben Cottrell, who I've been bigging up his performances, hasn't been very good today. Let's bring in Paul Glatzel over on the right-hand side, I think. I'm a bit upset it didn't show a replay of their goal, but it was just a free kick from deep and a header into the top corner. Well placed, yes, but was it a good goal? I don't think so. Worth noting, Wigan in this game are bossing possession. I'm actually going to go on attacking here rather than possession. Going back to old ways as the ball's lumped forward to Thomas. Wigan now with it. Miller back to goal, gives it to Hodge. Clark now with it, hits it. Oh no, not like this. Not like this. Stop it, football manager. Stop it. I'm going back to I'm going back to positive. I'm going and demand more. They've scored a set piece. Now they've scored a banger. It's, it's gone from me absolutely loving life to me maybe being slightly flustered. Hodge to Clark. Giving a bit of space to afford a shot. And I don't think he could have put it in a better corner of the goal if he tried. Don't, don't think he could have done it better if he wanted to. Right, they're, they're playing this mental system. Has anyone noticed the formation that they're playing? It, it's mad. Uh, I'm going to make a change here. And it may be a controversial change. I'm 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 going defend I'm going more defensive everyone. I know you never thought you'd see the day, but we have this in our locker white. Please go down the middle. Richards just go go winger on support. Glatzel winger on support as well. And then Lopez and Hughes J just no nothing silly now boys. We were ahead in this game. We were in cruise control. I am now starting to panic slightly. And by slightly, I may mean a lot. Right. It's going to be fine, but you can see the reason I've gone with the more defensive midfield is they're playing with three centre-attacking mids, which just seems mental, especially against our system. They're going to have so much space to work in. Anyway, let's hope that they're not going to complete the comeback, although I am scared they're bringing the ball forward, everyone. I'll let John to Miller, to Turnbull, to Smith. Plays it across. Soft side. Thank linesman. You might get man of the match at this rate. You might get man of the match. Time wasting absolutely. <laughs> Slow down the game. It was nicely worked by them. And I'll tell you what, he's absolutely onside. I mean, referees and linesmen do make mistakes in Football Manager. It is coded to be like that. So thank you very much, Mr. Linesman. Although it might not be enough. We've paid off the officials and it might not be enough. The ball is headed away. Thomas, you're there, mate. Thomas, run. Run like the wind. Look at him. Channel your, channel your inner foul. Go on, channel it. I mean, did it too much, really, down to the finish. If things stay as they are right now, we are about to go five points clear at the top, and I think it is going to stay as it is. My word, that was, that was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. We were in complete control of that game. Then they changed their system, and I was slow to react. And it caused us a fair few issues. But we did beat Wigan, and we did score three goals. You get entertainment with us. We're going to score goals. Our players, when they come out, they come out to Robbie Williams, let me entertain you. They know how to put on a show. It's a big win. It's a, it's a win that I will very happily take. And with that result, we, um, we go, I think, five points clear at the top of the table, which is always absolutely superb. You can see here, Scunthorpe, who we beat in the Cup, are going well. And Exeter, incidentally, the one team we've drawn against and our third in the league. So that gives you an idea of just how good they are. But make no mistake, a win against Wigan there is absolutely huge. Boston United lost 2-0, two goals conceded in the 90th minute. They're now down in 10th. Relax, everyone. It all looks normal again. We can, we can breathe a sigh of relief. Boston are struggling. I say all this, they, they could still bounce back. I think they're still within goal difference reach of the playoffs. It's that kind of season. It's going to be very, very close, you imagine. Ten games unbeaten. Oh, you'll love to see it. Keep it going, lads. Keep it going. Wasn't exactly the most convincing results there, was it? But we got over the line. Callum Green, man of the match performance, or at least best player of the match performance. He's very blooming good, isn't he? My, As far as advanced playmakers go, he's got 13 or above. Or actually, no, that's a lie. Composure's 12. He's almost got 13 or above in absolutely everything, which for this level... Frankly, is just absolutely exceptional. And yeah, he's been good so far. 7.32 average rating. Had that little injury that I mentioned. But since he's been back in the first team, we're looking good. Anyway, in terms of when we're going to be back, it's not going to be a lifetime away. We're going to come back for an away game against Boston United. It is the first time that Lincoln City and Boston United are going to play each other in a league match since 2006. 
Yes, it's been a long, long time coming. I hope to see you guys for that one. It's going to be a big one. We will also use tomorrow's episode as a chance to take a look at how Boston and the United are doing without me. You know, who they're playing, who they've signed, all that good stuff. So hopefully you're looking forward to it. And well, until then, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out. <laughs>